Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the new intro I made. I've been working with the animation tool a little bit. Not very good at it, but just tried it out. Okay, so today we're going to be doing three circuits problems, three circuit problems, and I guess it's a bit of a nice change since we've done like five mechanics videos in a row. So we're going to be doing a circuit pro three circuit problems from obviously called the circuits. Well, these aren't really um specific to Calda. These are some uh general these are some general problems but like classical problems but I found them in Calda first so I thought I'd use Calda snippets to pay tribute to that I guess. And yeah, so we're going to be looking at these two problems which are pretty similar and then look at a third problem which is a bit different but also pretty fun. Okay, let's get right into it. Problem number twenty. Determine the resistance between two neighboring vertices a and B of an infinite square lattice, assuming that the edges of the lattice are made of wire and the resistance of each edge is R. And so that's going to be the first problem and the second problem which is basically the same except it's an infinite cubic lattice, which means it's three dimensional, but that doesn't really change too much. So basically let's draw out the lattice first. Um, so, oops, these, that was a bad line. So there's a lattice like this, and each of these edges are resistors. Um, so these are all edges with resistance R. And basically the strategy with these problems is, well, you want to create some symmetry, right? Because of the infinite, because of, because any time, any time you have things that are infinite, you need symmetry to solve them because it's too complicated. So, well, let's let this, um, sorry, let's let that be A and this be B, and if we, and this resistance R. So, it's not going to be just R, right? Because we have to deal with all these other resistors, and for that, we have to drive in a current and drive out a current. And by that, um, I mean basically like, you drive a current I, I in here, and you take the current I out here. And you can, and using, um, using this current, you can find the voltage that happens between these two vertices, right? And if you know the voltage between these two vertices, you have V equals IR, which implies that R equals V over I. So if we drive in a current I and take out the same current I and see what happens, then we're going to be able to solve the problem. So well, let's just consider this first current being driven in. By symmetry from A, there's going to be a current I over 4 here, a current I over 4 here, I over 4 here, and a current I over 4 here. Well, and here, I over 4. So if we just drive this in, then from here to here, the um, resistance, I'm um, sorry, the voltage created just by this current, obviously we have to drive the current out. Um, we have to drive the current out so that it actually makes sense, but with just thinking about this current, then here there's a voltage drop of Ri over 4. And now let's um now let's just take out the current then the current here is going to be i over 4 this way i over 4 this way i over 4 this way and i over 4 this way and so there's going to be a voltage drop added here of r i over 4 well we could have also just said there's i over 2 here but i don't know but this also just it's the same thing so then you get that the total voltage drop is equal to I times R over 4, R over 2, and using this and combining it with this, you get that the equivalent resistance between the two is equal to um, R over 2. And basically for the infinite cube lattice, we're going to do almost the exact same thing. We're going to drive in a current and take out a current and superpose those and see what happens. Alright, so 
I'm going to draw the uh, maybe I should just read this first. Determine the resistance between two neighboring nodes A and B of an infinite cubic lattice, assuming that the edges of the lattice are made of wire, and the resistance of each edge is R. So let me draw the cube lattice, I guess. And I don't know why I'm drawing it like this, but but basically you can think about so there's just gonna be cubes everywhere and let's just focus on okay let's just focus on one corner since that's pretty that's going to be helpful because that's basically all we care about right because in here all we used was that when you go into here by symmetry it's just going to split in the four directions let me redraw that it is pretty that was pretty bad so, so this is one corner, and it's going to be a similar setup for the very adjacent corner. Man, I cannot draw. But it's going to be a similar setup. And let's drive in a current I here. I'm going to drive in a current I here, and because this setup is infinite, it's going to be I over 8 here, I over 8 here, and the same here here and here because there's one two three four five six I don't know so it's I over six and I over six and there's going to be an I over six here and once we take out the current here there's going to be I over six 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 and another I over six here which combines to create an I over three so then so then from here we have um V is equal to I over 3 times R so R equivalent is equal to V over I is equal to R over 3 and so that's how you do it for the infinite cube lattice and I hope these make sense I hope the explanation made sense this concept was a bit tricky for me to understand as well so if you guys have any questions you can um, let me know and yeah, so th these are the two similar problems, and now we'll look, we'll look at a, another problem, la one last problem that also involves infinite resistance, but sorry, in not infinite resistance, but infinite resistors, and and it's this one. It's kind of a common setup, um, and let me read the problem. Find the resistor find the resistance between the terminals A and B with the infinite chain shown below. The, res the resistances are shown and increased by a factor of two for each consecutive link. So basically the idea here is kind of like recursion. So if you've ever done math competitions and you have like um, some game where like two people are A and B are flipping coins and basically the first person who gets a head wins or something then you can say the total probability is equal to something I don't know um, like one half plus like one fourth a times uh, one fourth times the probability and you can solve something like that and basically we're using that idea here we can what we can do here is we can find the resistance of this remaining setup here in terms of the resistance between A and B and use that to set an equation because then then we can have a resistance um, we can use equivalent resistance to get the equivalent resistance in terms of its own resistance which will get a equation and you can just solve that using like the quadratic formula or something so let's consider um, let me change colors Let's cut it. Let's consider this section here. So, let's let the resistance between A and B be R equiv. So the resistance between A and B is R equiv. So what's the resistance of this whole setup here, right? Well, basically it's just this, but everything is just doubled. So we can say the resistance of this whole setup is. 2R equiv. So let me go back to white. So 
Let's redraw it with that setup. We can replace everything there. R. It's going to draw it like that. Um, so we can replace everything on this side, this whole section here, with 2 times R equiv. 2 times R equiv. And, but we also know that the resistance of this setup here is R equiv. So what we can do is set up an equation. So R equiv is equal to, so now this is just using series and parallel circuit ideas. So it's R plus the equivalent resistance of this, which is going to be one over one over R plus one over two R equiv. So let's simplify this. This is R equiv equal to R plus two R R equiv over two R equiv plus R. So now let's multiply it out and we get two R equiv squared plus R R equiv is equal to 2R R equiv plus R squared plus 2R R equiv. So let's rearrange and so that so this is a quadratic in R equiv, right? So we can rearrange this to be 2R equiv. Um, I'm just going to replace this with a, I don't know, a little r, so I don't have to keep writing the subscripts. So 2R squared plus well, we have 4R equiv here, R, R equiv, so it's going to be not plus, but it's going to be minus, minus 3 R, R equiv, sorry, not R equiv, R, R, and then we have this last R squared here, so minus R squared is equal to 0. So by quadratic formula, we have r is equal to 3r plus or minus the square root of 9r squared plus 8r squared over 4, which is equal to factoring out the r here, r times 3 plus or minus root 17 over 4. So one last thing is we can't have a plus or minus, right? You can't have two resistances. So if you have a minus here, then the resistance becomes negative, which doesn't make sense. So we take the positive root, and it's r is equal to r times 3 plus root 17 over 4. And that's our answer to this problem. And that's basically going to be it for this video. And yeah, so but all these, all three of these problems are kind of, when you look at them, it's complicated. And you're like, oh, I might have to set up some weird series or whatever to solve for it. But it's actually quite simple once you exploit um, either symmetry or recursion like this one where symmetry was exploited in the infinite setups the previous infinite setups and thanks for watching